Finally, the rumors have come true. The ever mysterious and highly rumored 16 inch MacBook Pro is finally upon us. While this isn't the rumored redesign we were hoping for, there are still plentiful improvements here and make this the best MacBook Pro in recent years. I think Apple is finally listening to us as battery was greatly improved, the keyboard is finally redesigned and it's what everyone was asking for as well. And of course the bigger and crisper display. We're gonna go in depth and look at all the changes to the new MacBook Pro as I feel it is going to be a bestseller this holiday season and I want everyone interested in it knowing all the facts and specs concerning this new 16 inch MacBook Pro. So without further ado, let's dive straight into the unboxing. So now jumping right in, you can see right away that the picture on the box lets you know this is the newest 16 inch Pro with that mighty fine display being showcased front and center. This MacBook is found in both silver and space gray, but let's be honest, 90% of people will likely choose the space gray option. On the sides, you do see MacBook Pro branding as well as Apple logos, and on the back, you get your spec sheet and serial number information. This is the baseline model, but I will be securing a fully spec model, all but the storage to compare with this baseline model. We have a tab here to aid in assisting us during this unboxing. Take off the plastic wrapping, open up the box, and you'll find your newer and bigger 16-inch MacBook Pro front and center. Set that off to the side for now as we dive deeper into the contents of our box. You'll be greeted with Design by Apple in California that has your literature pack it, including matching Apple stickers depending on what color you get, your warranty guide, and a product information guide, but no one cares about that. Let's dig deeper and you'll see your new 96 watt power adapter as well as your USB-C to USB-C cable used to charge and sync your computer. We now get back to the star of the show though. Take off its protective plastic, lift open the lid, remove the protective sheet covering the screen and the display should automatically power on and it's ready for you to start with the setup process. You know it's weird because I never thought this day would come. Apple listened to its pro consumer base and released a computer we have all been asking for. Where to start? There's just so much to love about this new machine and I know countless people who are finally going to upgrade because of the removal of the butterfly key switch, so let's just start there. I personally like the low travel of the butterfly keyboard and yes, yes, I know, I know, I am in the minority. However, it was always gut-wrenching to spend well over $2,500 and wonder if the keyboard would survive the test of time before I upgraded and and having that thought constantly in your head is extremely worrisome, especially when most people who purchase MacBook Pros use them for their jobs, salaries, or their hobbies. Thankfully, the keyboard has been entirely overhauled and is now basically the same keyboard found on the iMacs, dubbing it the Magic Keyboard, and oh boy is this magical. I think they named it this because like magic, your entire bank account will be gone. Good trick by Apple, I have to give it to him. But in all seriousness, the new keyboard is amazing. You can see all the extra travel here and is capable of this because this is a scissor mechanism. Straying away from Apple's pretentious attitude on wanting to make their customized butterfly keyboard a thing. It has one millimeter of key travel which I know will be beloved by thousands if not millions of people purchasing a new 16 inch MacBook Pro this holiday season. It also features an Apple designed rubber dome under the keys to make them bounce so that your fingers fly off from one key to the next in a more natural way. You'll also notice that the arrow keys have also been redesigned to have this iconic inverted T arrangement, which isn't too big of a deal for me. And lastly, yes, finally a dedicated escape key. I know there are a lot of memes about this and people are probably wondering why tech nerds think this is the holy grail of tech. Like including an escape key doesn't sound like a big deal at first, but it is because you don't know how many times the escape key is desperately needed in pro applications like Final Cut, Logic Pro, Photoshop, and countless other pro apps and the touch bar will just freeze up or become unresponsive. It's first world problems but was extremely annoying and now finally the frustration has been lifted. Thank you, Apple. Oh, and then the Touch ID button is now also separate from the touch bar, which doesn't have too many direct advantages other than making it look more pleasing to the eyes. I don't know. Probably the biggest improvement and of course the namesake for this MacBook is the enlargement of the screen up to 16 inches diagonally. This screen is jaw droppingly gorgeous. It's what we've come to expect from Apple but they really stepped it up here. It's slight improvements like these that do add up and make using this machine a more pleasurable experience. Largely due to compensate for the bigger display, the native resolution clocks in at 3072 by 1920 at 226 pixels per inch. 
up from 220 ppi on the previous 15 inch display of course this is a retina led backlit display with ips technology featuring a p3 wide color gamut true tone technology and up to 500 nits of brightness the bigger display really is noticeable if you spend a lot of time in front of your 15 inch macbook again while not the futuristic new look we were hoping for the side and top bezels have been slimmed down a bit to squeeze in more real estate creating the illusion of it looking way bigger despite it being marginally bigger in terms of size and weight speaking of it seems our beloved MacBook Pro went into bulk mode and hit some weights because it is now heavier and bigger dimension wise. It measures in at 0.64 inches in height, 14.09 inches in width, and 9.68 inches in depth. This makes it only fractions of centimeters bigger but noticeably is thicker and heavier once you hold it. It weighs in at 4.3 pounds or 2 kilograms, up from 4.02 pounds or 1.83 kilograms on the previous generation. I don't think anyone will mind the extra thickness and weight as battery now has been generously improved. I'm so happy Apple is moving away from their fascination of having products be as thin as possible. Because of the extra thickness, it allowed Apple to include a much bigger battery, a 100 watt hour battery to be exact. Interesting side note, 100 watt hours is the maximum capacity allowed on US airlines to be approved as carry on items by TSA. Meaning, from now on, Apple will need to rely on battery efficiency and better performance management to squeeze out more battery life in subsequent generations since the maximum capacity has now been reached to board planes with. I don't think Apple would make the battery physically bigger as it piss off a lot of people with extremely busy lives needing to take their MacBooks on a plane. But as I was saying, this translates to about 11 hours of continuous wireless web browsing up from 10 hours from before. Included as well is that bigger 96 watt hour USB-C adapter needed to charge up that enormous battery in a timely and concise fashion. The bigger chassis creates a great situation for consumers and Apple engineers as it creates a plethora of advantages. It conglomerates everything we all want from our notebooks only by sacrificing a slightly bigger body and a slightly heavier computer. If the heavier weight is really that big of an issue to you, I suggest you sign up to your nearest gym and start doing some arm curls, seriously because I'm so happy with this new machine. An additional point is that now, with more space, there is a bigger heatsink, 35% bigger to be exact, and 28% increase in airflow. What this means is that that infamous i9 processor will finally likely not overheat. That has yet to be proven. I can't wait to order a fully spec'd out i9 with top of the line graphics cards and 64 gigs of RAM and compare it to this baseline model and see if it overheats or not. If you want to see that video and future tech content just like this one, make sure to subscribe to my channel with bell notifications so that you don't miss it. Share this video with another Apple lover or anyone interested in upgrading their MacBook Pro. This computer is terrific for content creators, photographers, music producers, and anyone else needing serious power from their workstation as now thermal throttling should be a thing of the past. Speaking of, the base MacBook Pro, which is this one I have here, starts at $2,399 expensive i know trust me and features a 2.6 gigahertz ninth generation six core i7 processor capable of turbo boosting up to 4.5 gigahertz new amd radeon pro 5300m graphics cards with 4 gigabytes of gddr6 memory 16 gigabytes of fast 2666 megahertz ddr4 memory and graciously apple has given us more storage at the base levels with 512 gigs of speedy ssd storage but can be configured up to your liking up to a whopping 64 gigs of ram an insane 8 terabytes of ssd storage an 8 core 9th gen i9 processor clocked in at 2.4 gigahertz and up to amd radeon pro 5500 m graphics cards with 8 gigabytes of gddr6 memory this is going to prove for a beast of a machine and i can't wait for my performance test to see how quickly export times will be and how smooth rendering will be with those newer graphics cards maxing it completely though including the eight terabytes of memory will set you back six thousand one hundred dollars ouch too much money man comment down below what you would do with those six thousand dollars lastly again because of the larger chassis audio is huge on this new computer you get better punch your bass thanks to the six speaker sound system housed within that produces room filling audio that doesn't distort at all the audio clarity is top notch and i'm super thrilled to have such an excellent sound system in this macbook I'll be comparing the audio quality in my future video comparing the 15 inch to the 16 inch so have your eyes peeled for that video. I know DJs and music lovers will likely pair their Beats Solos or AirPods Pros to this device but having that capable sound is great for when you're with your significant other and are gonna watch Disney Plus and Busta 
wait, let's just keep this PG. Additionally, the new 16 inch MacBook Pro has studio quality three mic array that Apple claims rivals professional third party microphones. I would certainly never use it for my YouTube reviews or podcasts, but it is a great improvement over the last generation and could be great for better clarity on Skype or FaceTime calls. Again, all minor improvements that make for a robust upgrade. The T2 chip is also present here as it's been on past MacBook Pros. It features a secure Enclave co-processor that helps power and authenticate you with Touch ID, helps with encrypted storage, and in general, starts learning your pattern so that it boots up your frequently used apps in a flash, working hand in hand with that incredibly fast SSD. Like with previous generations, it has a 3.5 millimeter jack and you do get four Thunderbolt 3 ports that can transfer data up to 40 gigs a second and can support up to two 6k displays meaning apple is basically saying you can attach their individually priced new xdr displays with separately sold stands by the way that come in at five thousand dollars a pop so if you really want to be a big baller and impress me go out and buy two xdr displays later in december and hook them up to the new 16 inch macbook pro would make for an amazing setup sure but i am not spending 13 grand just to see that happen with everything being said you'd expect me to begin with some flaws or downsides to the 16 inch macbook pro right but honestly i can't find any other than the small increase in weight not yet anyway i still need more time to play with my new toy and gauge at its performance capabilities before i can make my final verdict on it but on the surface this is the epitome of what an upgrade should look like and I'm glad Apple is finally making their customers happy and it reflects with their stock price. I don't know if this has something to do with the absence of Johnny Ive with a stereotypical British accent, but this is what I like to see. Thicker gadgets that look and feel much more premium, but of course we don't want it to tread to thick territory with three C's. No, thick enough to not compromise on portability either and I think Apple is walking that line exceptionally well. We have a bigger display with slightly improved resolution and pixel density, a robust magic keyboard that should in theory eliminate the countless and embarrassing issues of the butterfly keyboard, and I think this alone will draw back thousands of MacBook lovers that strayed away because of the pesky faulty keyboard. A dedicated escape key, improved battery life, amazing upgradable options with graphics cards, up to 8 terabytes of storage and up to 64 gigs of RAM if you want to go ahead and sell your soul to Apple. Huge improvements to audio and better mics for recording, but we still only get the measly 720p HD FaceTime camera. But it's okay Apple, I forgive you this time because you made a heck of a machine here. My initial thoughts? Go out and buy one if you're considering it. So many great things and it's about damn time Apple turned around and started heading back in the right direction. These are only the highlights of the new machine but I still need more time to work with it and see how it handles my productivity flow. Stay tuned for more videos covering the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. Although not the redesign we were slobbering over through renders and rumors, I am still largely pleased for what Apple has done here. So please stay tuned for future testing and coverage of this new machine. I can't wait to catch you all of your beautiful faces in my next video. Peace out, guys.